Have you ever pondered the implications of the Second Amendment? How does this 27-word statement shape the fabric of American society? Today, we delve into these questions and more as we dissect the Second Amendment. Part of the Bill of Rights, the Second Amendment states, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Quite a mouthful, isn't it? So what does it mean? The Second Amendment has been a cornerstone of American history since its incorporation into the Bill of Rights in 1791. It reflects the Founding Fathers' belief in the necessity of an armed citizenry as a bulwark against potential tyranny. The latter part of the amendment asserts that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. This makes it clear that the citizens' right to possess firearms should not be violated or restricted. However, the reason for this is provided in the preceding clause, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. This suggests that the citizenry, or the militia, must be capable of bearing arms to ensure the security of a free state. If the people are disarmed, they cannot serve as a well-regulated militia, and therefore, the security of a free state cannot be guaranteed. This is a crucial point to consider. As we delve deeper into the Second Amendment, it's essential to address a hot-button issue, gun control. Some argue that gun control laws infringe on the Second Amendment, a belief rooted in the Constitution's interpretation. One of the key arguments against gun control laws is the belief that they are unconstitutional. Critics argue that these laws infringe on the right of the people to keep and bear arms, a right that the Second Amendment guarantees. Another argument is that gun control laws do not deter crime. Critics argue that criminals by nature do not follow laws, including gun control laws. Instead, they suggest that these laws only limit law-abiding citizens from obtaining firearms for self-defense or other lawful purposes. Lastly, there is the perspective that gun control laws disarm law-abiding citizens, leaving them vulnerable. Critics argue that if citizens cannot bear arms due to strict gun control laws, they cannot defend themselves, their families, or their property, thus undermining the very essence of the Second Amendment. These points underscore the ongoing debate surrounding gun control and the Second Amendment. As we move forward, we'll continue to examine this topic in more depth. As we navigate this complex debate, it's essential to consider the other side of the coin. Those who believe that the Second Amendment does not guarantee an unlimited right to own guns. One of the key arguments for gun control is the interpretation that the Second Amendment refers to militia service. This suggests that the right to bear arms is not an individual right, but a collective right intended for the functioning of a well-regulated militia. Another argument is that the Founding Fathers could not have foreseen modern weaponry. Critics argue that while the Second Amendment may have been relevant during the time of muskets and single-shot pistols, it doesn't necessarily apply to today's semi-automatic and automatic weapons. Lastly, there is the perspective that gun control laws are necessary for public safety. Supporters of gun control argue that stricter laws can help prevent gun-related deaths and injuries, and that the right to life and safety outweighs the right to bear arms. These points represent some of the arguments for gun control and further illustrate the complexity of this ongoing debate. As we move forward, we'll delve deeper into the historical context of the Second Amendment. Stepping away from the historical perspective, let's explore the argument that gun control laws disarm law-abiding citizens. This perspective asserts that such laws only make it harder for honest people to own guns and protect themselves. It is believed that criminals, regardless of the laws, will always find ways to obtain firearms, leaving law-abiding citizens without a means of self-defense. This argument is anchored in the belief that the right to self-defense is a fundamental human right, one that should not be compromised. The proponents of this view argue that the ability to defend oneself and one's family should not be infringed upon by stringent gun control laws. This argument suggests that gun control laws may unintentionally leave law-abiding citizens vulnerable, stripping them of their ability to defend themselves in the face of danger. As we continue to explore the Second Amendment, we'll delve into its historical context to further understand its origins and interpretations. Finally, let's examine the argument that gun control laws are necessary for public safety. This view is rooted in the belief that stricter gun control laws can help prevent mass shootings and other forms of gun violence. Advocates of this perspective argue that these are not infringements on the Second Amendment, but rather reasonable restrictions on gun ownership. They contend that the priority should be public safety over individual gun ownership rights. 
They suggest that if gun control laws can save lives, they are worth the restrictions they place on individuals. This argument suggests that gun control laws can play a crucial role in promoting public safety, potentially protecting us from the very dangers we might be arming ourselves against. As we navigate through these diverse perspectives, it's important to remember that the goal is a safer society for all. To fully grasp the Second Amendment, we must understand its historical context. The framers of the Constitution had just fought for independence and wished to ensure that citizens could protect themselves and their new nation. From whom, you ask? Essentially, from anyone who sought to infringe on their liberties, including their own government or foreign nations. Legal interpretations of the Second Amendment have evolved over time. The landmark District of Columbia v. Heller case in 2008 affirmed an individual's right to possess a firearm for self-defense within their home. The extent of this right and potential regulations, however, continue to spark debate. But remember, with rights come responsibilities. Responsible gun ownership, appropriate training, and adherence to regulations are vital to balancing individual rights and public safety. Although not federally mandated, I think we can all agree that proper training is a good idea. The Second Amendment often sparks heated debates about background checks and the types of firearms civilians should have access to. Finding a middle ground in these discussions is and always will be challenging. In conclusion, the Second Amendment, deeply ingrained in American history, remains a contentious and significant constitutional right. It's a complex issue, with passionate arguments on all sides. What are your thoughts on the Second Amendment? Please continue the conversation in the comments below. This is Clump of Cells, signing off. Until next time, stay curious and stay informed.